like mine, the second page is upside down. And if it was, what would the rest of them are too? It's an interesting thing I like to put right now. I said a few things I want to talk about on the report. There's three sections to this. One is on the federal and state uh, funding by federal and state department. Second report is then breaking down our budgets by each individual program within the federal government and within the state. And the third breaks the funding down even further by each division within IWD. There's a couple of comments I want to make. The first report is the one on, on by funding source. And you'll see this is after 55.5% of the year. Basically, I make reports up based on how many pay periods that transpired during the fiscal year. Obviously, the majority of our costs are incurred during a pay period. So after 55% of the year, if you get to the general state general fund section, you'll see in the field offices it says we spend 89% of the budget. What you really have to look at for field offices and state appropriations, if you look farther down in the report, you'll find a line that says the penalty and interest fund, six million revolving account interest. I still get that word. Long. It's supposed to be reserve fund of four million dollars. What happens is once we hit the 100% mark on the state appropriation dollars, we move down, <clears throat> and the next in line is we use the penalty and interest money uh, of that six million, 1.2 million of that is appropriated. That'll be the next money we use. Once those funds are used up, we move down to using the reserve fund interest dollars. Using reserve fund interest last in order to keep the money in the fund and generate as much interest as we possibly can. So that 89% is kind of misleading. Where we're really at, if you add all the funds together, available for field offices, it's, we're at about 61% at this point in time. Now 61% is going to be because the first six months of the fiscal year are more expensive than the second six months because the first six months is when we had all the offices closing. And that obviously that whole process of office closing end up even taking longer than we anticipated because of the, the bumping and all of that that occurs. And so we'll get closer to staying within 100% as the balance of the fiscal year and get closer to June. Uh, the other one there, uh, misclassification appears as if it's going over budget. Again, that's a situation where we use the state appropriations for misclassification once those funds are exhausted, we move and use the unemployment federal grant to finish the program during the year. So once we get 100% of the state appropriations expended, we'll move on and use the, the uh, federal unemployment funds. The next report on by program, there are quite a few categories that look like they're running over budget, but the reality of it is, uh, the second one, Alternative Trade Act Adjustment, that's an entitlement program. Once we run out of funds, we request additional money from the federal government. Uh, they must accept our request for funds. Always have. Uh, disaster funding, we're running over budget. However, we've already put in requests for additional disaster funds. The uh, governor's 10% appears to be running under budget. There are several projects going on that are just now gearing up that we'll be using that funding for. One of the, probably the biggest one being the NCRC certificate program. Uh, I moved down to the Workforce Investment Act about two thirds, about one third of the way through there, where it looks like we're running way under budget. And a part of that is because some of those programs are multi-year funded. National emergency grants are included in there. Those can run anywhere from one to three years. The WIA formula funds are good for three years, so the percentages running low are not, a, are not a concern to me at this point in time. Plus at this time of year, a lot of our tuition bills for Workforce Investment Act haven't been paid yet, so that's not showing up in those numbers. So those should go up next month. Uh, down towards the bottom, food stamp program. I believe we just reopened Des Moines to handle food stamp assistance those expenditure levels should start going back up. The Social Security WIPA grant, we've applied for additional funds for that. It just hasn't been approved yet, I, so I can't reflect that on the reports that I'm giving you. 
On the next page, just a couple more quick items. Again, you'll see it appears as if on the third line of state appropriations is running over budget. Again, that's strictly just because we're five going and using that pot of money first. Uh, labor shed receipts appears like it's going over, it's gone over budget. Labor shed receipts come in every month during the whole year. So I'm not concerned about that either. We'll eventually receive enough receipts to cover the expenditures. The last section on that page shows the reserve funds. I always want to reflect most of our federal grants are obviously on a federal year, not a state year. I have to reserve at least one fourth of those grants for us to get through the first quarter of the next state fiscal year. So that's what those funds reflect, are the funds being reserved for July through September of this year. And I think that's about all the comments I want to make. The last, like I said, the last section just then breaks down the whole report by each individual division. Same numbers, just kind of broke out in a little different way, because obviously we've got to make sure that each division and each bureau that's assigned a certain program, a certain number of dollars, stays within their budget, so that overall we stay within the entire budget available to the agency. On that, if there are any questions, let's see how we have. Bruce, I thank you for the always do this in an excellent way. You can explain it very well and play it out for us. And Greg, I better point out too that I put my hearing aid in this morning and it went beep beep and the battery died on it. So oh, okay. <laughs> please speak up. All right. Well, I was just thanking you for the way you always explain this and put it out so even lay people and myself can understand it. But I, I see the Labor Commissioners in and I'd like to welcome Michael and thank you for coming. But I have one thing. I see the misclassification and a lot of us are feel the same here were uh, very involved in that. And I, I look in and I see that we've spent almost 300000 How much has been recovered back from that 300000 Because I believe in the past it's been yeah, Mike, like 8 or 10 to 1 that we've recovered back. I think back. Mike would better answer that question. The actual recovery? Yeah. We're gathering statistics right now. Uh, we haven't been tracking the accounts in that manner. Um, the actual wages that we found from this classification are over 71 million, and we've identified about 2.7 million dollars in penalty, interest, and taxes that are owed. Um, this year, uh, we're making a very concerted effort to collect on those. It's a little more difficult to collect on UI tax, taxes that are not paid. It involves putting liens on businesses, negotiations, and so forth. Um, but I would hope by the next meeting, I can provide you with what we've actually collected um, because we're going back and having to look at each account in that matter. Well, I just, once again, I was, uh, several of us in here were involved when that, was, that program was put together. And if I'm here just asking here, if we're spending $300,000 and at this point we're looking at recovering somewhere in the neighborhood of $2.7 million, I'd say that's really pretty well spent. Yeah. Yeah, we just won a Supreme Court case for $139,000. Yeah. So we just recouped half of it right there, right? basically. That doesn't even take into account future benefits. I mean, our point was always to get them to report and pay the tax. I don't understand. So this yields continually. Yeah. So I think that, that I'm glad to see you, and I'm glad that we started that program last year, two, two years ago? Two, years ago. Three years ago. Yeah, um, my, my question was, you got 2.7 in penalty, interest, and taxes. Is that just the UI taxes? Or yes. Is that state taxes? That's just or UI federal taxes. taxes or it's just taxes? UI taxes. Okay, so the number is probably a lot higher than that. Yeah. Talk to the Department of Revenue to get there. We pass the cases along to the Department of Revenue. Oh. Um, we don't share back and forth with the EU. Um, and on top of that, we also, uh, the employers, uh, paid in the workers' compensation, uh, so there's another return on investment that we're getting as a result of this too. Right. Well, the more employers that are, more more construction employers that are registering now as contractors too. Well, I think the thing we discovered was you if you fall you are fired before you hit the ground, so you can pay. And uh, some of the stories that were said to that committee that I were, were horrific. Sneaking people out of hospitals in the middle of the night so they wouldn't have to pay. And all, I mean, just a horrific story. So I think that this apparently appears to be a 
program that was started that seems to be at least paying for itself and, and working very well. So. And I have to give, uh, just so you know, a lot of credit to the Labor Division's efforts because they are a great resource of getting us um, examples and and uh, giving us continual feeds on things that we should be looking up and investigating. So I think that Commissioner Morrow's group and, and Mike Wilkinson's group are really working quite well together in that whole process of identification. I, I guess one thing you did say, Mike, troubles me. I, I, I seem to remember you talking, putting this all together, that there was quite a bit of discussion as to uh, uh, the uh, revenue and the Labor Commission working together and exchanging information, that apparently that hasn't happened? Or mm, I don't think so. Um, there's a we well, know some federal laws that stop it, I know there's some statutes. There was an agreement. It would be there was an agreement. It's really more between the, the uh, I would part of revenue and IRS. We have special agreements and special right. steps we have to go through to exchange that data. Um, but we really I don't think we have any barriers with contractor registration and labor. Now, yeah. we don't have any barriers with revenue, Iowa Department of Revenue, either. Our law provides that we can with it. There are some proposals on their side. They had some difficulty with that. They made some legislative proposals to allow that. They exchange with IRS, and we have an agreement with IRS to exchange information. So That's where it was. It was with IRS. Have we expanded with investigators and auditors on this classification too, or are we? Thank you for asking. Um, we're right now we're in the process of expanding that to more auditors across the state. We made some changes in that particular unit um, to centralize the investigations with our investigations manager, and also to expand the number of field auditors that are going to be looking at this classification cases. This data clearly shows that we've got issues, and it's a nationwide issue. Um, it's a, they're harder cases to handle, but we've got some really good tenured investig uh, auditors that can handle these. And so we're expanding that. We're having to do some extra training with some of these auditors and, and get them up to speed on handling these cases, but we really need to grow this one. Is uh, the majority of industries where you see the violations occur uh, in the construction area, or is it broadly A little over 50% of the cases okay. are from the construction industry. So it's pretty broad in terms of the scope of industries that are yeah. utilizing this yes. loophole. Yeah. Uh, thank you. I got a, I got a couple budget questions. Uh, we're, it's 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 difficult to try to be able to put together this budget. Uh, dealing with my house counterparts, uh, basically they cut the governor's uh, recommendations about in half. And that's pretty troubling to me because I want to see the resources in the Department of Workforce Development uh, because the people you help. And, and I just want to know a couple of things. I mean, what would that mean to you uh, with a 50% reduction in your budget? And number two, um, they're saying that, well, because you've uh, closed the satellite offices, that you have tremendous savings and uh, they don't need to give you uh, all the resources. So with that, what did you save? Uh, what are the savings? Because uh, we, we don't, I've been trying to get that information and I need to know uh, in order to make things work. And I know I'm going to have to back up where the Senate is because that's what seems to happen every year. We're here. House is there. Last year I had to move more towards the middle where I didn't want to necessarily be, although we did get uh, agreement uh, with the House and, uh, and Senate members to put resources in to keep the, the field offices open. But I just wondered what the savings are so I can at least be on some solid ground when I'm negotiating to say, here's, here's really what we need. So I can, I can help that that calculation for you, Senator, we'd be happy to do that. Um, but that really uh, puts us in a situation that since we have no earnings on the uh, reserve fund, that's a four to five million dollar hit right there. 
um, from last year. And if you recall, we're going to be down to about $200,000 in that fund uh, at the end of this fiscal year. So that's going to be a <coughs> very big issue for us. I think that uh, um, I'm going to be telling the House uh, Republicans that if this budget that they propose stays in effect, it's going to be astronomically terrible for the workforce system. We would have to at close probably at least three offices, uh, but not I would say. We will have to. I withdraw my next question. Okay. Um, we will have to completely re-architect uh, integration and how we use resources in the integration model, and I believe it will impact somewhere between 100 to 150 people. I believe we will have to take off the payroll, and I'm not in any way recommending that. I don't agree with it. I have no plan to do so. So anything you need to help in that discussion, I'd be more than happy to provide. Well, well, we'll have to get with your staff. Uh, uh, quite frankly, it's been difficult. We've been juggling a variety of different numbers, and, uh, and my, my staff that helps me uh, trying to put this together and working with uh, the, the uh, service agency, fiscal agents, and it, it, we just, I'm not getting a real clear picture because it changes, and I know you said you had some budget revisions and there was some trouble there, but as we get to the end, in order for me, sit down and, and we need to, yes, we need to sit down and work, work through this, because the other thing is the reserve account was created to expect for the express purpose of field offices and uh, you know so uh, there's some question in my mind about uh, going back and looking at how those dollars can be used because uh, we received REDAC dollars when we when the Association of Business and Industry lobbied the legislature to end the surcharge that was on each employee and was at one time a very complicated formula but ended up being about eight dollars per employee per year uh, as round numbers uh, and uh, Joe might correct me on that but somewhere between seven and eight um, once that went away uh, we had to come up with a way for for uh, putting those offices together and working with that right. and so we had some resources that were supposed to help dislocated workers and we placed those dollars into the Unemployment Insurance Trust Fund with kind of a box around it to provide services for unemployed workers and uh, with the purpose of helping fund the satellite offices for, for access. And so we're going to have to get back and look at that, uh, that $150 million. I would like to see it continue to go because obviously you do have a couple of satellite offices that still remained open. And with the interest rates on there, I mean, that doesn't cover a lot. No. And so, uh, you know, there's a lot of issues surrounding this, so we've got to work through. Yeah. But uh, I'm going to do what I can to make sure that the department has the resources it needs. And uh, I, I hope you're successful in talking with your house counterparts because uh, in my conversation, you know, I guess they're not your counterparts, but uh, you're in the yeah, same administration, supposedly, right now. And... Uh, and, and uh, they weren't very happy and they felt that they were just, you didn't need that money because you closed the offices and that was basically what my co-chair told me. And, and so uh, I, I hope you can give me some help on this I, because I I'm facing I some and very can, difficult issues. And I can tell you I believe the governor's office will give you some help on this as well. I spoke directly to I, him about it uh, the other it, night at the, when the, the China, China visitation. Yeah. So. And uh, so I know he's trying to convince yeah. them also. Yeah. It would be helpful if those of us who don't talk quite that depth of numbers to have some talking points to carry to our officials. Be happy to reinforce we'll, that as we'll board members. It seems like board board we ought to be your advocates point. in this yeah. thing. I, I couldn't begin to talk any sense into that argument sure. at this point. So I think it would be helpful to have some of the stuff that Senator Dossler is talking about because there's not a lot of people who've been on the board for the same length of time as he has. And the deal was made to cut the taxes for businesses at $7.21 or whatever it was. 
to keep those offices open, we set aside that REDAC money to generate the revenue. And I understand the interest is beyond the control of anybody in this room, but you know, we've got to figure out some way to make sure we have appropriate funds to meet the legitimate needs of Iowans here. And it's not happening right now. And uh, we've got one chamber that uh, I'm very concerned about coming through with the appropriate funds because uh, you know, we can starve government all we want, but uh, effectively we, we are starving. Uh, the people of the state who need the resources available. Well, we will commit to send out talking points as we go along the process so you know where that uh, proposal is on behalf of the House Republicans. It hasn't yet come to the House floor, uh, but I am, that's pretty much my entire next week and beyond is working on that. We will send you all talking points, and Senator, I will be happy to work with your office. Uh, however long it takes. I, I, I like to try to make as much of it as simple as I can, you know, because then I think it's more clearly understood. And I have told the governor's office that if, when I'm asked for the fiscal uh, result of, of this, what I will have to say, and, and they are um, wanting me to be uh, as blunt as we can so that we can um, get a change in what the House recommendation is, so I'd be happy to work with you on that. Okay, thank you very good. Okay, You're finished? No other questions for, for Kelly? Okay, thank you. Uh,